Well, good morning, it's great to be with you. My name is Mike Hardy, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you on the way of right motive. We're looking at the Beatitude today, the next part in our nine beat series on blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they will see God. And so I hope that today's message will encourage you and inspire you and liberate you in the way of Jesus. Well, today we're going to be talking about this whole idea of what does it mean when Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Well, I don't know about you, but often in my life as I've reflected, I've noticed a divide in my life between what's in my heart and what I show other people, both good and bad. And uh, this, I, as I've reflected in life, I've, I've often realized, huh, it's funny. Our personalities are those things that we pick up through life from a young age. It's almost like our clothing. It's the things that we do to put on to protect ourselves from the elements, from the weather, uh, as a way to express ourselves and to work out uh, what piece of clothing is going to help me fit into the culture and the society or the subgroup that I'm in. And our personalities are a little bit like that. But one of the challenges is that this can actually turn into what we call mask wearing, where we actually we, we wear a mask as a way to protect ourselves or to hide ourselves away from revealing who we really are. And I was thinking about an example when I was young, one time when my dad took me to the shops and uh, he said to me, look, it's time to get a new pair of shoes. I want you to look at the shoes here. And he said, pick what's the pair that you want to get. And being aware that my parents didn't have a lot of money, I saw the pair of shoes that I really wanted and I thought, I really want those shoes but I looked at the other pair of shoes that were probably more the right price that I thought my dad could afford. And I said, oh, I want those ones. And he questioned me on it. He said, are you sure you want those ones? Are they the ones you really want? And I said, yep, they're the ones I really want. And I look back as that, that being one of those kind of earlier moments in my life where there was like a division in my heart between what I was saying when I was presenting out of even potentially a good motive or a good intention, but trying to either protect myself or protect my dad or, or something. I don't even know how to fully understand it, but realizing that that started, or at least that's my earliest memory of this journey of working out, what do I need to say? What do I need to do? Who do I need to present for there to be um, safety or for there to be um, acceptance or to make people happy? And I realized that if I behave a certain way, or I say the right kinds of things, or I'm funny at the right kind of times, or I can name drop someone, or I can do certain things at just the right moment, based on the group of people I'm with, I can find a place of acceptance, and I can fit in, or I can feel like I'm a part of the crowd. And maybe you can resonate with that, maybe your personality is different to mine. But this speaks to this whole idea of mask wearing. And the idea that in our society and culture today, more than any other time in history, we're able to actually curate who we are to the world better than ever. We can do it on Instagram, we can do it on social media in a thousand different ways, where we can actually take a photo of ourselves or our life and we can present an image to the world that we're happy to present, that we feel like represents the kind of person that we wanna be in the world. Now, not all of that is bad, but there are some aspects to it that can actually speak to this other part where we're not really being who we truly are. Sometimes we can become so divorced from ourselves that we don't even know how to make true contact with God, let alone other people as a result of the persona and the mask that we've actually attached to ourselves. So over the next few minutes, I wanna to talk to you today about what Jesus means and what he might be inviting us into as he says, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. Okay, so purity of heart. Jesus says the words, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Now, it's amazing. When Jesus says these words, his listeners would hear these words in a few different ways, probably a little differently to the way we hear them. Because the word purity and this idea of purity was a really big deal. Because 
in the Jewish tradition, one of the emphases that the religious leaders put was on purity laws and regulations and rituals. All the things that you had to do to be pure. But Jesus doesn't say blessed to the pure. He says blessed to the pure in heart. Because what Jesus is always doing on one level is he's liberating people from the oppressive religious systems, rules and regulations that made people feel like they weren't good enough whilst at the same time upping the standard for what true faith looks like, what true religion is, which is which flows from the heart. Which is why the writer of Proverbs uh, says, guard your heart above all else, for from, for from it flows all the issues of life. In other words, it's insight that what actually makes the difference to how we live our lives. And if you try to live your life only living by external practices, sooner or later, those things become exhausting, they become overwhelming, and it actually doesn't transform who you are. So if you're living with a mask or you're living with a persona of religiosity or goodness or trying to demonstrate to the world that you're a pure person or a really good person, it actually becomes exhausting. What Jesus invites us into in this is purity of heart, which means pure wholeheartedness or authenticity. Pure in heart is not perfection. It's wholehearted authenticity with right motive. Mark Scandrick in the book, The Nine Beats, he says this, purity of heart is being honest about what's inside. You give up trying to be perfect and you show the real you. When we're honest with ourselves and with others and with God, we step out of the shadows and into the light. And light transforms everything it touches. It reveals, it heals, and it purifies. Now, when I hear these words, I hear good news. Because what I hear is, I don't actually have to be perfect. I can actually bring my true self to God. I can bring my true self to those that I'm in community with. I don't have to keep trying and trying to prove that I'm something that I'm not, whilst also the invitation to actually become my true authentic self, where I allow God, as I walk in the light, to actually transform my life and my heart from the inside out so that I actually begin to see God for who God really is, to actually, as I see God, realize that I can love God freely and I'm invited to love my neighbor. And if I want my neighbor to feel that I can love them for who they truly are, which is how God loves me, is it possible that I could actually allow myself to be fully loved by God and loved by others for who I truly am? Warts and all, mistakes and all, in fashion, out of fashion, when things are going great for me and when things are not going great. And this is part of the deeper life that Jesus invites us into. So let me remind you of the good news of Jesus. The good news of Jesus, the gospel, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven is this. God, through Christ and the cross, has done everything that needs to be done to make us right with God, to declare us pure and clean and, and without blemish before God. That's the kingdom reality of how God sees us because God has made us clean, has forgiven us, has restored us. The challenge though, is for us to live in that reality. Because when we look at our lives, we see the gap between how we live our lives and actually who God says that we are. And so because who God says we are is our reality, we need to live in that freedom, live in that reality, and so that should help us remove the persona or the mask that help, keeps us hiding, being afraid to actually say, yeah, sometimes I forget who God, who God declares that I am. Sometimes I behave in ways that is contrary to the ways of Jesus and his kingdom. And I can say that without fear of shame and guilt and condemnation because I know that God already declares me good because of what, who he is and because he's for me. Because I'm a son, or if you're a girl, you're a daughter of the Most High King. We are His children, beloved of God. And that's our standing. And when you know who you are, when you know that identity, you know you don't have to keep performing to get God's approval. You can actually be your true self before God and ultimately before others. But that is something that we need to learn and practice how to do.
So there's a couple of things that I want to encourage us to do as practices to help us live in this reality that Jesus invites us into, this kingdom reality. And the first one is tell the truth about yourself. And the second is practice right motive. So let's chat about this first one for a second. Tell us the truth about yourself. There's a couple of things that's really important when it comes to being free and taking off those masks that keep us hiding from both God and from others. And that is being free to say, this is the reality of who I am. I'm not everything that I want to be. I'm not everything that God is inviting me to be. This is my true self. But when we come into the light and we don't hide, we actually find freedom, we find grace, we find community. Uh, it's a place of authenticity and it actually means, it's, it's like the launching pad for us to actually walk into transformation, to walk into healing, to walk into restoration, to walk into that life that Jesus invites us into because we don't have a dividing line between the life we, we want to be that we're projecting to the world and this other life which is our true self. And so there are a couple of things that can actually really help us. And this first idea is really the practice of personal examination. Taking some time just to actually invite God into our lives. Look at our hearts. Uh, look at the reality of how we're living and saying, this is who I truly am. This is, this is what I truly think about. This is how I truly feel about things. And allow God to meet us in that place. Psalm 139 verses 23 and 24 is that great passage that David writes. It's a psalm of reflection. It's a psalm of invitation where he writes about how God sees every aspect of who we are. And at the end of the psalm, he has these profound words of invitation for us, which is, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along in the path of everlasting life. There's been so many times in my life when I prayed this prayer genuinely before God and seen things in myself that I hadn't seen before, reflected on actions and behaviors and ways that I've tried to present myself to the world around about me that hasn't really been in a true alignment to the life that Jesus invites me to. And sometimes it's kind of confronting when you see those parts of yourself that you don't really like, those parts that make you want to hide because you don't want other people to see this aspect of who you are because you know that maybe that's not socially acceptable or not, you know, it doesn't get a big tick of approval and have people clapping and applauding like some other behaviors do. But it's in this place where we can actually say, wow, hmm, is that what my motive was the other day? Oh, is this the reason why I said what I said the way I said it? And is that how I truly felt? Is that what was really happening for me? And why was I afraid to say what I thought about this issue? And why was I um, held back in, in sharing my true thoughts about this situation? Was it because of fear? Was it because of shame? And in this psalm, this is an invitation for us to practice this idea of coming before God with open hands and saying, this is who I truly am. God, search me. And when I see who I really am, be reminded that God loves me even in those moments. Those parts of myself that I'm embarrassed about or ashamed about, or I don't even like about my personality, those parts of me that I think are weak or not strong, those parts of me that I think, oh, I don't very, look very successful to the world around about me when I, when I look at this part of my life, I can actually hear the voice of God in that moment say, you are my beloved child. And as you are, I am for you and I love you and I'm with you. And it's amazing when we invite God into that space, how we find freedom. And it's the invitation for us to then walk that path with God in total freedom. The, the second practice in this is this idea of communal confession. In James chapter 5, verse 16, the brother of Jesus, he says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Now, if you're like me, I like the sound of that verse, but I actually find it really hard to live out. First of all, it may be because, do I have safe enough people around about me that if I was to confess my sins, would that freak them out? Or would they actually be willing to pray with me and see me healed and restored and find um, that path of authenticity as that journey to healing and restoration? But really, 
throughout the ages, some of the people that have actually found the deeper life in Christ have testified over and over again that when we can actually talk out what's happening in our life with others in a safe place, safe, trusted friends, and we can confess, hey, this is what's happened, or this is what I've been feeling, or this is what I've done, and people can pray with us, we actually see ourselves walking into the light rather than retreating into the darkness. And there's incredible freedom in that. Many years ago, I was driving home in the car uh, with a pastor at my church, and I was a pretty young guy, I was studying at college at the time, And I'd been in a lecture where something came to mind for me from my past that I was embarrassed and ashamed about. And I felt this just deep desire to want to talk about that and share about that moment. And so I did that kind of like where you risk just a little bit. You say something that you hope invites just enough um, invitation to find out if the person's safe enough to tell a little bit more. And my pastor at the time, as we were traveling in the car, he said to me, hey, maybe we can chat a little bit more about this when we get back to the office. And so we got back to the office and we we went into what was the boardroom at the time. And we sat down and he said, hey, tell me what's happening. And he said, but before you do, I want you to know this. No matter what you say, isn't gonna change how I feel about you and it doesn't change how God feels about you. And I just want you to know, I'll be probably confessing to you too. And I felt this immediate kind of sense of safety and protection. And so then I I said this thing and he said, oh, is that it? Almost jokingly, as if I thought it was going to be some huge thing. And he said, and it's okay if there's more, (laughs) but it kind of just, I think he thought I was going to say, you know, like I've done this horrendous crime or something that I've been carrying. But it was just something that was bugging me and weighing on me. And I tell you what, as I shared it and he said, is there anything more? I said, no, that's it. I just started crying and I had this massive emotional just relief because I'd been holding this thing inside me for probably two or three years. And he just started praying for me, put his hand on my shoulder and he prayed. And the more he prayed, the more I cried. And I was probably more embarrassed about how much emotion was flowing out of me than actually what I'd just told him. And then he, after he prayed, he, he said, how do you feel? And I said, well, I'm a bit embarrassed about how emotional I was, but I said, but I just feel lighter. And it was just a reminder to me of the power of, it, of with safe people being able to say, hey, this is the reality of my life. And when we confess our sins to one another and we pray for one another, we can find healing and restoration. And so I want to encourage you, find someone that's safe in your life. Find someone that you trust, someone that demonstrates the character of Jesus and talk to them about maybe something else that's happening in your life. And finally, this second component of what it means for us to live in the reality of who God says we are so that we can practice living out pure hearts is to practice right motive, which means doing the right thing for the right reason. Sometimes we like the idea of being honest and kind of just saying, oh, this is who I truly am and, uh, and, and being upfront about that. But honesty has to be measured against the intent or the motive. Because I may be really honest about how I feel about a situation, but if I was to tell you that, that could be really hurtful. And so if the motive of God is love, is love of neighbor and love of God, then I'm going to think about how I'm being true to myself and then express the reality of how I'm living my life in a way that matches the heart of God, which is always love. And so our right motive has to always be a play. And it reminded me about so many aspects of Jesus' teaching where he encourages those of us. He says, um, Matthew 6, 24, a little bit further on from the Beatitudes, when you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and the streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they've received all the reward that they'll get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private. And your father who sees everything will reward you. And then he goes on to say the same thing about prayer. When you do your religious acts, and he's really addressing motive here. Not that there isn't a place for public prayer, but he talks about how the Pharisees and religious leaders would go out into the public places to demonstrate their piety to everybody, to make themselves look more holy than perhaps what they really were. And Jesus says, when you pray, don't pray like that. Go and pray in a prayer closet. In other words, what he's saying is, What's your motivation in what you're doing? And it reminded me of the fact that 
Sometimes because of fundraisers these days, we have online fundraisers everywhere. You can jump on, you can support someone who's going through a particular need or uh, help a particular cause. And there's opportunity to actually put your donation amount in and then to put your name and a comment and that can appear on the feed. And sometimes that's encouraging. Sometimes the, the comments that people put about a cause are really encouraging. But one day I was putting in an amount and it was a small amount and I thought, oh, I don't really want to put my name on this because everyone's going to see that I only gave $20 to this. And I'm like, yeah, is that going to make me look stingy to other people? Whereas I'm like, I can't, I don't really have more than that to give at the moment. So I didn't put my name on it. Didn't really think too much more about it. But a little bit further down the track, it was another invitation uh, to give towards a particular cause. And I had a little bit more resource this time. And so I put a figure in and felt quite comfortable to put my name and my business to that particular thing. And as I typed it, I got this check in my spirit, which was, what's your motive in this? Which was a reminder to, oh, last time I was afraid to put my name to it because I thought the amount was too small. Now the amount's bigger. This makes me look generous. I'm happy for the world to see that part of me. And so that particular occasion, I chose to delete my name, hit anonymous, and just put a, a general comment that couldn't give away who I was. And it was funny how there was this internal battle in me around that. Could I really give the larger amount without my name attached to it? Now I share that with you because that's my true self. That's my true reality. But you know what? God was for me in that moment. He's for me in this moment. He's for you in all the moments that we're embarrassed about or ashamed about, or, or we think, oh, that's not my best self that I'm putting forward to the world at the moment. But we can trust that God is with us. And as Jesus said, those who are blessed are the pure in heart. Those who are willing to be their true self before God and others, and those who are willing to act with right motive. And so my encouragement to you today is this. Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart. Not those who think they're pure or who are doing all the pure things or presenting pure to the world, but those who heart, whose hearts are for God, are for others, and for being true to who they are, knowing that they are loved and accepted by God for they will see God. And when we see God, we love God more and we love our neighbor more. So may we drop our masks. May we step into the light. May we choose goodness. And may we walk in the way of right motive.